Hello everyone. Welcome to this practical pathology series from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. The topic which I am covering today is peripheral nerve sheath tumors that's neurofibroma and schwannoma. Now what's a peripheral nerve? A peripheral nerves are basically are those which are outside of the central nervous system, right? Which can which are outside of brain and spinal cord. Majority of the benign and malignant neoplasms of peripheral nerve sheaths are composed of cells that show evidence of schwann cell differentiation for example these are the neurofibromas the schwannoma and malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor now in today's tutorial we'll be discussing about neurofibroma and schwannoma which are the benign peripheral nerve sheath tumors one unique feature about the peripheral nerve sheath tumors is its association with relatively common familial tumor syndromes like for example neurofibromatosis type 1 or neurofibromatosis type 2 now moving on to neurofibroma neurofibroma is a very common benign mesenchymal tumor with a neurogenic differentiation these tumors consist of mixture of cell types and these cell types include schwann cells perineural perineural like cells fibroblastic cells and entrapped axons so neurofibroma they can present clinically as a soft skin colored papule or nodule like that okay which can be solitary most of the times they are solitary but when these are multiple like this it's usually a marker for neurofibromatosis type 1 that's von recklinghausen's disease what are the variants of neurofibroma they can be diffuse or plexiform type of neurofibroma or variants of neurofibroma a diffuse type of neurofibroma is basically uh, a superficial plaque with diffuse swelling something like this whereas plexiform variants are the larger ones deep tumor with palpable bundles of schwann cells giving a bag of worm like appearance so that's how a plexiform variant of neurofibroma looks like clinically now microscopically it's very simple they are composed of circumscribed proliferation of spindle cells in superficial and mid dermis which can occasionally extend into the subcutis now what are what do you, what do you mean by spindle spindle is basically a slender rounded rod with tapered ends okay which are used in hand spinning to twist and wind thread from a mass of wool right so when we say spindle shaped cells it's basically which means to say we are dealing with a cell which is wide in the middle and tapered at both the ends and these tumor cells in neurofibroma they are randomly oriented with elongated wavy monomorphous dark nuclei so this is a characteristic feature in neurofibroma you know you find these cells which have a wavy nuclei of course we also know that it is composed of mixture of cell types right so we also we also saw that it contains fibroblasts which synthesize collagen and this collagen will be in the form of thick and thin collagen strands that look like a shredded carrot and that's why they are referred to as shredded carrot collagen appearance So let's understand neurofibroma microscopically by this virtual slide look at this this is an elevated lesion or a nodule on the skin you can make out in this scanner magnification itself that it is comprised of a, a circumscribed tumor but it does not have a capsule okay in the dermis right that's the epidermis and this is the dermis right you find this tumor in the dermis and upon higher magnification what is that you are looking at you can see its haphazard proliferation of these spindle cells and these cells look at this these cells are having elongated nuclei some of these cells do have wavy nuclei i'm sure you can appreciate these you know waviness of the nuclei here and there right so you can make out that these cells have a wavy nuclei and what is important here is look at this okay, if you can closely see under higher magnification you can appreciate the collagen look at this this is a thick collagen band these are thick collagen and these are thin collagen so a combination or a mixture of thick and thin collagen is what it makes a shredded carrot collagen appearance so that's about neuro fibroma right so basically it's a dermal tumor sometimes very rarely it can extend into the subcutis as well but this is a circumscribed tumor without having a distinct capsule Now moving on to schwannoma schwannoma is also a benign mesenchymal tumor which exhibits schwann cell differentiation and these are the tumors which arise directly from the peripheral nerves they are commonly associated with inactivating mutations of neurofibromatosis 2 gene 
and the loss of the gene product is the merlin right so these presents as firm skin colored nodule which are often solitary and very very rarely they are multiple okay now let us understand a difference with the differences between neurofibroma and schwannoma with this illustration so neurofibroma and schwannoma so these are you know fusiform tumors on cut section what you can make out in neurofibroma is that the schwann cell or the tumor cells are intermingled with that of a native nerve whereas the schwannoma you can easily make out that the native nerve is separate and the tumor is eccentric in location and upon cut section you can make out that tumor is arising eccentrically and it is easy for such tumors to be enucleate schwannoma can be separated from the nerve fascicles whereas neurofibroma we cannot separate because it's intertwined with in the nerve fibers in the endoneurium neurium that is the reason why it is important to note or make a difference between neurofibroma and schwannoma because in schwannoma you can easily excise the tumor whereas neurofibroma you cannot excise the lesion without compromising the nerve so grossly schwannomas are firm gray white well circumscribed encapsulated masses unlike neurofibroma these are encapsulated masses that abut the associated nerve without invading it okay and this is the feature which i was discussing about right which simplifies the surgical excision on cut section they are usually light tan and glistening and of course you can find some amount of cystic changes in the larger tumors microscopically these are comprised of a circumscribed proliferation of the spindle cells with a distinct fibrous capsule so these are purely truly encapsulated tumors they have two areas one cell rich areas with fascicles it's called antony a area and the other area is cell poor area which is a loose myxoid area called antony b area based on this is named after a swedish neurologist nils antony and what what do we contain in this antony area they contain areas with palisading of nuclei with which run parallel to one another okay and in between these are the nuclear free zones so the combination of this a nuclear free zone along with abutment of this palisading of nuclei is referred to as varroke body we will understand in detail with a microscopic examination this varroke body is named after jose varroke who was a uruguayan pathologist so this is this part is cell rich area con consisting of fascicles with palisading of nuclei and the nuclear free zone and this is a cell poor area loosely arranged area that is antony b area so this is a whole mount view we can easily make out that this is a very well encapsulated tumor at this magnification you can make out that there is cystic change there and you can also make out that there are two distinct areas the cell rich areas the darker areas and the lighter areas the darker areas are the antony a areas and the lighter areas are the loose area loose uh, loosely cellular area which is antony b area let me focus that so the cell rich antony a area and the cell poor antony b area so that's the area of hemorrhage and that empty space is basically a cystic area so let me concentrate on the antony area which is a antony a area which is a cell rich area which is comprised of spindle shaped cells in fascicles the characteristic feature is as i said the palisading of nuclei you can you make out that this is a palisading of nuclei and between these two areas of palisaded nuclei is the a nuclear i mean a nuclear zones the cytoplasmic zone so the whole thing with a, a nuclear zone in center and the palisading area in the periphery constitutes one varroke body so varroke bodies are basically a nuclear zones surrounded by palisaded nuclei at this magnification you can make out that there are numerous varroke bodies right so this is a antony b area which is loosely cellular okay sparsely cellular and they are myxoid in nature you can make out that these are the myxoid areas right so that's about microscopy of schwannoma which contains antony a and antony b areas with varroke bodies in antony a areas so how do you treat schwannomas easily it can be enucleated so that's all about neurofibroma and schwannoma for today i hope you understood the concepts very well if you have liked this video please hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share if you find this video useful thank you